Hello, everybody. Welcome back to our Thursday, Art Quilt Thursdays. And I'm excited that you're here. And oh, we got a nice crowd. I'm tickled. Laura's here again. Laura, that's wonderful. So I sent to our group, I sent you a copy of the pattern. And you're going to say, well, Deb, it's a little pattern. I'm going to teach you my method of resizing the pattern. So if any of you can't get on our group to get this pattern, because I attached it, I put a topic in our group, and I attached the pattern. If you don't, if you want the pattern and you can't, get on our group to get it, I will send you an email and with the pattern attached. And then all you have to do, if you want to use it, because you don't, you can make your own pattern if you want. Our time to quilt at twc.com. Okay. Here is my email. And, um, if that's cute, you use a calendar now. And if you need a copy of the pattern, email me at that. Let me get that email open so I'll see if an email comes in. Hold on just a second. But I'm hoping those of you who belong to our group have gone and printed out your own copy. And yes, it's it's not, you don't have to print out four or six pages and tape them together. It's one page, and I'll show you what to do with that. Okay, here we go. All right. I now have, I now have that email box open. So if you email me, I'll, I'll attach that pattern and send to you. Okay. All right. So, I'll put the pictures down here. Now I'm back. Hi, Pat. You're Oh, it's raining in Myrtle Beach. You know what? I think it looked like it was going to rain here today a little bit, too. So, you just printed the landscape picture. Okay. I Now, what you do. Okay. Here. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Miss Linda. Hi, sweetie. What you're going to do is you take your... This is the pattern you print out, and you take, it's on a regular size piece of paper, you fold it in half, and you press, run your fingernail along that. Hi, Kathy Klein, Kathleen, Kathleen Ziegler, hi, sweetheart. And with your fingernail, you crease it really good, okay? So you folded it once, you fold it again. Nice and nice. Okay. So now, if you were to open it, you would have four even squares on the front of this. But I'm going to get you to go a little farther. Now take and fold it yet again. And do a nice crease. You know what I do? I fold mine and then I get the iron and iron it. Okay. Then you fold it one more time. And this will make, I guess it is 16. Yeah, 16 blocks, 16 squares. Okay, even, let me show you. Okay. So now when you open it, you see, you have four by four, which is 16. Okay, now, let me, Marsha, I'm going to make sure to send it to you, sweetie. And I'm worried because I sent Marsha something, and I don't think it got to her. All right, so I'm going to send it to you right now, Miss Marsha. Let me go to my file. Got the file. Okay, hold on one second. And while we were eating dinner tonight, we watched a show that talked about the 
Alps. And in that show, oops, I don't need it up. I just need to copy it. All right, Marsha, I'm sending it to you, sweetie. So, come on. I'm pasting it. Okay. I just sent it to you, Marsha. So, it should be to you in just a few minutes. Oh, uh, okay. So, Marsha, if you don't get that gingerbread man suit, I'm going to mail you another one. I think it got lost. It was in a little envelope. All right. So, I am still, I'll leave that email open. So, if you need to reach me, you can. Okay. So, now you folded this paper. Oh, honey, that's not a single problem. You know what? If it, the time is not good for you to do it. Um, whoops, let me see if, if you, okay, I, our time and this, you'll be able to scroll back, but our time to quilt at twc.com. All right, there it is. I just typed it in. And if this is not a good time for you to do it, you can still enjoy it and you can get some great ideas so that when you have time. Then, and all this stuff will just file in your brain, and then you'll be ready. So don't worry. Hi, Miss Polly. Okay, so those of you, though, who are, you want to know, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to enlarge something without a copy machine. Once you've printed this out, and I showed you how to fold it in half, fold it in half, fold it in half, fold it in half, and then... The best thing is to use your iron and press it firmly so that you have very sharp segments, okay? Oh, and while I'm here, I just wanted to tell you, my computer's been acting up lately and I need to order a new laptop. In case I disappear or in case one week I'm not here, it might be because of my computer and I've been looking up to get a new one and it's going to take weeks to get one. So, I'm going to try to just kind of nudge this one along best I can. But just in case, don't be, don't be worried. It's just the computer. All right. Because you know how lately my lot Sunday live streams have cut off? That's because there's some connection that's not tight in there and it cuts me off. And then sometimes my, I get that dreaded blue screen and it freezes up and won't do anything. So I've been trying to download all my files off of it because one day it's just not going to work. But anyway, so now you've got your paper. Vicki Robles. Yes, I will send it to you right now. Let me make sure. So you people, if you, if you want to follow along with me, Get a piece of muslin or white or some kind of cloth that you're going to use for the backing, a foundation that you're going to put to other fabrics to. Decide what size you want your quilt to be. Get a piece of fabric that size and starch it if you can. But then I'll show you how to transform the pattern onto. It doesn't have to be the same size. Mine's much bigger than my piece of paper. Okay, let me get an email to Vicki Robles. Okay. And all right. All right, it's on its way to you, Vicki. All right, now. And any of you, if I don't, if I haven't emailed you before, then just know you'll have to email me so I'll have your email address. You have sound but no picture. Hmm, that's odd. Can other people see me? I hope you can. All right. So let me move everything over this way. I'll be real careful and try not to lose the live stream. But let me get my lamp. 
Let me get my lights. Let me get all set up. So, come on. Oops. If you unplug the lights, they don't want to work. <laughs> I got them plugged in. Here we go. Okay. Can you believe I've got a remote for this little light strip over here? I mean, have we gotten just too precious or what? <laughs> okay. All right. Oh, okay. I got you. Yeah, you might have to come back in. Okay. So here we go. I want to make sure I don't lose you. All right. Here is my fabric. Okay. And here's my fabric. I'm going to measure it for you, but you can do it any size you want. But I will measure this for you. And oops. Come on, Deb. Can you still see me? Are we still connected? Somebody just say yes or something to let me know we're still here. Oh, you got me now. Good, Pat. Does anybody still see me? Good, good, good. Okay. So what I've done is I've cut my muslin 24 inches long by... 21 inches, 21 inches tall. And I know that this piece is going to get smaller because as I do things to it, putting fabric on it, putting, um, doing my embroidery, it's going to be smaller. But what I have also done on this is taken the fabric folded it in half, and ironed that mark. Then folded it in half this way. Do the same thing you did to your paper. Now press it very firmly that way. Then I'm going to fold it in half this way. And, you know, put a little pressure on that because you want these seams to come out nice and crisp. Okay. Hello, Teresa Jukovic. All right. Now I'm going to take this and fold it in half. This is the last fold. So it doesn't matter what size your fabric is. You just take and fold it like this. Okay, this is the um, Teflon. This is my ironing board, and I have it covered in that Teflon stuff. So, and I do so much of my work here. I really do. All right, so here we go. But it's Mark Cut. It's a big piece of plywood. It's like 20... Four by 65. I love it. I've got it sit, screwed on top of an old dresser. All right. So now do you see what I've got? I've got 16 blocks here. All right. Let me move this out of the way for right now. Because I want to get a little closer where you can see me. Let me turn this down. All right. Then... I'm going to get a pencil and a pen. And remember that none of this is going to show through. None of this is going to show through. So I usually start out drawing it in pencil and then go over it in pen because I can see it better, okay? So what I'm going to show you, let me see if moving in might help a little. Okay. Okay. What I'm going to do is now pick up my drawing, okay? And I'm going to start right here in the center. 
And I'm going to do this block right. Well, let me do this block so you can see it easier. I'm left-handed, so I always tend to go to the left. So what I'm going to be doing right now is this block right here. This block right here, and it corresponds with this. Okay? So I just draw what I see in this block with that goes with the pattern. And I just kind of, and I look, and on here it goes up to about the middle, so I go up to about the middle, and then this comes across from that, and just a squiggly line to just above halfway here. And what I did, just to remind myself, is I did some big squiggle lines like this which reminds me to do some up-close wildflowers when I'm done. But that'll be the last thing that goes on. Okay, so it's just this easy for you to take any picture you can find. You don't have to be an artist to draw something. So now, since I've done this one, I'll move to this one. So I pick back up on this line. And I come down in a squiggle to about three quarters of the way over here and stop. And then up, I have some tree roots right up here in this block. So I'll do some roots here. And you're just doing a rough drawing. Whoops. Actually, that's pretty close, but not quite close enough. So I'm going to erase this. All right. And I'm going to move it over just a little bit. I look on this square and it's about, about between five eighths and three quarters. So actually where I was was pretty good. I'll just move it a little bit. Okay. So that's... So now, let me see. I'm not sure if you can see. Let me turn this off. I don't know. Can you see the tree roots right here? And then here's the squiggle line. I tell you what, I'm going to go ahead and draw it in ink, and that way you'll be able to see it. Okay, so there's the tree. Here is the squiggle line. It's just going to kind of show me where the meadow is where the different land points are. Then back up here, I had something going up this way, and I had the rest of this coming this way. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Now, I don't, I think you won't see it as good if I turn the light. Well, you do, I, you kind of see it. Okay, let me see. If I put these down here, okay. So now, there's not much in the rest of these. Let's go up and do this block, which is the second one down, the third one up on this very edge. This has got a lot in it. This has got a cabin, trees, a big tree, and some little trees. So now we're going to move to that. So... This block is going to go in this block. Let me see. Oops. Okay. Let's see. All right. So what I'm going to do here is, if you can see, see this block right here. So I'm going to get ready and draw this line that's going to go across. All right. So I come up to about here. And I do this. And that. Okay, then I bring my tree up. And that tree's a little too big. I'm going to have to probably shrink it. But anyway. But then the tree somehow gets... A canopy like this. But in this block, 
it'll be less than halfway up. So here is the bottom of this block, and here is the top of this block. So not too far from this edge, and less than half, I'm going to come out with a cabin. And I'm just looking at what I've drawn in the same block on the paper. Because whatever is in this block, if I draw it in that block, it'll all match. And this just had a couple little windows. Here's the roof. And I need a chimney right here. And here's the roof. I'm going to put a window up here. And then a window down here, and then a door. And then I think I put three windows down the side of this. Okay, so now I've got my little cabin. Now it's got this little bit of meadow in front of it. Then right up here, there's a line and then starts the trees. And the trees are going to be all in this. So what I do to show myself there's gonna be trees in this block is just kind of go up and down all over. Okay, it's gonna be forest behind it. Now let me see, I'm not sure you can see that good. Okay. Yeah, if you can enlarge it on your printer, that's pretty cool. But not everybody can do that. And this is a wonderful way. Okay, I'm not sure if it's going to let you see that good. But I have done my house and the tree here and the trees in the background. Okay. Now. Maybe I'll mark this down a little. All right. So now I'm I've got this top corner block. And so there here's I'll show you my line if you can't see it. It's right around here. Okay. This is my line. And in this, I just do what I see. And this top and that block, this block right here. That's all I draw in it. All right. So I know up here I need a little cloud. And so I draw a little cloud here. And if you want, write on there cloud so you'll remember what that is. Then... I can see that I've got a little bit of a mountain coming down from about half, a little bit above halfway. So I think about right here, and then I have a mountain coming down about to right there, okay? And you'll make the shape perfect when you cut the fabric out. But starting here, all the tree line. This is all trees, so I do that shape to remind me. So, let me see. Okay, so there, here's the cloud. This is part of that mountain. This is the tree line. So, so far, now let me show you. I'm going to hold it up to show you. Okay, cloud, part of the mountain, tree line, and cabin, and root of a tree. And like I said, none of this muslin is going to show when you're finished. So if it helps you to use an ink pen, something that really shows up, then that's good. All right. So when we come up... We're going to have this, this drawing. Let me show you. I'll show you around a little bit first. 
we've got a sky up in here with just a couple random clouds. And I'm thinking of doing a little ink tints in the sky later to give it a little bit of like a setting sun or something on it, okay? But then we're going to have, this is going to be a green hill that's much closer to us. This is going to be a green hill. This is going to be a dark periwinkle. Remember, the further away, the more faded, the lighter the colors are. The closer, the stronger and more vibrant they are. And can you still hear me? Let me know if you can still... Hi! Hello, Teresa Louise, I quilt too. It's so good seeing you. And Teresa, if you want a pattern of this, just send me an email and I, oh good, thank you ladies. But anyway, so then we've got a dark per periwinkle mountain that does not have snow on it. Then a light periwinkle color mountain that does have snow. And you can see where I've drawn and W means where the snow will be on it, okay? And then here is a tree, major tree line here. Then all of this dips down and you see the stream coming out of the mountains. Thank you, honey. And then the lake. Here is the lake. Okay. Whoops. Let me make sure I'm sure. Oh, you know what? I forgot. I forgot to pull back out. So did I, am I all the way back out? I hope so. Okay. So here is the lake. Then over here is going to be a green pasture, and then another smaller tree line over here, then a little bit of just green. Now, the center of the land is going to be relatively flat. Each side will rise up to a little knoll, okay? And rise up on this side. And how we're going to show that is by the color that we put in the meadow, and the size of any wildflower we might put. Here we'll hint at color. And here is where we'll do the embroidery with lots of wildflowers. And even some right in the front. So like maybe some sunflowers or something. Bluebells right in the front. And But that'll be very last. The ones we do in the front will be the last thing that goes on. Because we're going to fill in everything else. Now... Can you see all of this? I hope you can. Oh, okay. Don't worry. I will send you another one, Vicki. Do not worry one little bit. And so I'm going to do a pale sky with some clouds, a dark periwinkle heel here, a light periwinkle, because just think of it as fog or something getting in the way. Um, you hear me double. Oh no, I'm sorry, sweetheart. But, and then this will be green pasture because it's even closer. And all of what we're trying to do is we're trying to use color to get depth. And that will be a lot more interesting. So somebody said they wanted mountains and they wanted wildflowers. And of course, I always like to put water in there whenever I can. So, and then this green pasture will kind of have lines in it, like they're, they're, they've got hedgerows, you know, like in England or something. So, and then, be, you know, we'll be looking for different kinds of fabrics. But now you see, I, do you feel comfortable with what I described as to how to use the 16 box method to enlarge this? Because I think you can see when you only deal with drawing what's in one square at a time, it's really easy. And since you're not going to see any of this, if you make a mistake, just erase it, scratch it out, and do it again. So I will do a little bit more of that in a, mo in a moment. You're on the phone and it's frozen. Oh, no. Oh, no. So anyway, let's now... What I want to do now, okay, so I start, I start with my muslin. This is my foundation. I do what's called collage landscaping. Oh, thank you, sweetie. I do what's called collage landscaping. 
So just pretend this is a big piece of paper and I'm going to cut out construction paper and glue it down. That's pretty much what we're doing. Now, we're not going to do a lot of that tonight. This I want to give you a chance to practice drawing your do the 16 point system. Otherwise, I would have to you'd have to print out four pieces of paper and tape them together and then every everybody um would have to have the same size quilt. This way it gives you options. You might just want something this small, just like a little bit bigger than the paper. Now what I'm going to do is show you some fabrics I have chosen. Because this is called auditioning fabrics. And it gives you a good idea of the colors that I see for mine. But understand, your colors can be totally different than mine. So don't, don't worry. All right, I chose, and I like getting three or four of every color. This is a very light piece that I dyed myself. And I'm real tickled with it because that gives me a lot of options. And another place this fabric would... Another place that this, well, Laura, I was, I'm, what I'm trying to do is, is remind you of when you were a kid and you used to do a little landscape and you used to cut out construction paper and glue it down. What I'm trying to tell you is, yes, this is fabric, but don't be any more afraid of it than you used to be as a kid cutting construction paper and gluing it down. It's the same thing, except we're doing it with fabric. Sometimes when people are confronted with fabric, they panic. Nope, this is the same thing as construction paper. So the, the good thing about this fabric is this will make wonderful snow on the mountains. Do you see how the dye worked? So this can be used as sky. This can be used as snow on the mountains. So this is one of the ones I picked. Here is another sky I picked. I don't know if I'll use this, but, you know, then I have a scrap of this. The thing I love about landscape quilting, I'll cut my clouds out of this. The thing I love about landscape quilting is you can just save all your scraps and use them. Here's a very mild part of the sky. I can also use this as snow on the mountains. Remember, snow is not pure white. It's a blue white. So, and then, hey, I think I could find a good cloud. Look right here. I could take, find a good cloud. So, those are my candidates. I call them candidates because I don't have to use any or all of them. They, I just pull out what I think might work. All right. So now, oh, I've even got a few more. This, these are going to be for my mountains. The idea I had was, and I can use this too, is a sort of periwinkle blue for the mountains. And I don't know if this, periwinkle blue for the mountains. And because it's kind of a, a little bit of a shine from the sky. And I just thought the periwinkle would be really, really pretty. But you can use purple. You can use pink. Because depending on where you are, depending on what the sun is doing, your mountains could be any of those colors. And you know what? It's your landscape. It's your world. And you get to choose. So I don't grade after you're done. So I wanted to get from very dark to medium to the lights. Okay, so I think that's a nice palette. So that's my mountain fabric. And this also will add to my, this will probably be my waters. And I just might use some of this for water. Let me tell you something about water depending on if you've got a breeze and you've got a ripple,
but also water is so reflective. So you can take a piece of sky fabric and you can put it on the water to look like the reflection from the sky. So here we go. All right. So anyway, this can be for water. I'll see. But I got those out. Now, the bulk of the fabrics are going to be greens. This is a good time to use fabric that has different colors in it because we're not going to do the, all of the flowers by embroidery. That would take forever. But I just wanted to show you for the tree line, I love this fabric. If you love doing, if you love doing landscapes, start saving scraps and look for fabrics that will make an impact because yes, we're going to do thread painting and we're going to do um, crayon or pencil or ink tints on this too. But with this, look at that. You're halfway there. Oh, I'm sorry, sweetie. I'm sorry, Vicki. You're having a tough time tonight. But anyway, so this is good. So this is going to be for that tree line I was telling you about. And then you want, you want dark darks. You want mediums. These are for the cabin. You want reflectives. You want you know, anything that has a lot of jumble in it. Here is another really good dark for the tree line. So I'll keep my darks medium here. Just, and I'm going to add to these greens. Uh, I'm going to add to these. Then have your scraps ready. Because some of the flowers we do, it'll be big enough that we can cut like confetti. Okay. So I'll show you how to do that. Some of them we're going to embroider. Some of them we're going to paint. But this, I thought, I love these for the cabin. And if I want it to look like a log cabin, I might use that. Or maybe I'll use that for the roof. But, and then when it comes to the windows, I can either use a yellow as if there's a, la a lamp glowing in the window, or I can just use a lighter, light grayish brown, something like that to kind of look like a reflective window. But this is what I've picked out. I've also got a tree in there. I'll probably get a gray for that, a gray brown for that, and get some special, a special green just for the top of that. So I think I've kind of shown you what you can do um, to get ready for this because I think it's going to be a lot of fun. Now, so you know how to fold your paper into 16 pieces. You know if you have starch, start your muslin or whatever fabric you're going to use as your foundation and you're going to fold that into 16 pieces. Just go half one way, half the other. Half the other, half the other, you'll get to 16 squares. And just draw what you see in that square. I promise it will work. So then you've got to go through and picture in your mind's eye what color are going to be your mountains. Do you want light green pasture, dark green pasture, medium, everything start pulling out what what is this oh so start pulling out what kind of colors that you're feeling for this some people might want a sunrise and have an orange and pink and yellow sky some people might want it to be midday and have a beautiful clear blue what you want to do like I said, my mountains are going to be periwinkle because there's going to be a, remember, there's going to be a lot of green. Most of this quilt's going to be green. So what color do you want to make your mountains stand out? You could do a gray or silver mountain. Um, you could do purple, purple, you, pink, you name it. You Orange, brown. So... 
What's wrong? <laughs> oh, Mark doesn't want to and me. <laughs> I hear what he says under his breath. And sometimes one of me is more than enough for that poor man. <laughs> I don't want to make him run for the hills. So then this next week, because I'll be back next Thursday night. And next Thursday night, we're going to be cutting and gluing down. Okay. And I'll show you kind of how, yeah, Purple Mountain Majesty. You might want, instead of doing meadow with flowers, you might want to do a wheat field, amber waves of grain. I mean, this could get, after yesterday's wonderful inauguration, I could get all kinds of uh, patriotic spirit. So, but anyway, so you pick out, choose your fabric, make sure you draw whatever pattern you're going to use, mine or your own, draw it on your foundation, you draw it with pen because none of the foundation is going to show you're going to cover every bit of it. Make sure you have a good bottle of white glue. Um, and also, if you have fusible interfacing, get that handy because that's going to be good for some of the things like the cabin or tree, you know, some of the just the one of things, the water. And um, so if you have some fusible, if not, don't worry, we'll use white glue. OK, easy peasy. This is going to be fun. This is going to be as easy as coloring and cutting up construction paper when you are five years old. Okay. So the other thing, you know what? Th that's one of the reasons this is good. Mark was like, are you ready to do two shows a week? I said, it pushes me. It makes me use my creativity. It gets me out of a rut. It, it makes me energized happy to be alive and it makes me create because it's too easy for me to sit up in that recliner with the laptop on my lap and go down numerous rabbit holes on the computer. That's not, that's fun, but I need to exercise my creative brain. So I grabbed this really quickly. I've got candle wicking yarn or string. I've got DMC floss. I'm going to be getting some of my chunky yarns. Um, might even get some Angelina fibers. That'd be real pretty to do on the water and maybe where there's a little, some sun rays coming through. So even this, I said, I can find some place to use that. So find yourself. No, I don't think I said don't use white glue. I want you to use white glue. So um, I use white glue. It's simple, easy, and expensive. You can use a glue stick. Whatever works for you. The glue holds it down temporarily until we can put it under the sewing machine needle or by hand tack it down in place so it'll stay. So I do like using the glue and I call, that's why I call it collage landscape because you're just cutting and pasting. We know how to do that. So um, be gathering all the things you're going to need. If you gather, oh, you didn't. Well, I tell you what, you just have to have a, like a silicone, you know, you know, any kind of sheet that you would use to iron any of your fusibles. All you need is that, and you're going to just fuse the Angelina to itself, and then you stitch it down, or you glue it down. So don't worry. We'll try that again. But remember, this is all fun and experimentation. So be gathering up yarns. Be gathering up embroidery flosses. I've even got a spool of thread that looks thick, and if you pull one of the threads, it's like nine braid, a braid of like nine threads. If you pull one of the threads, it ruches up. That would be great for some of the flowers. Also, if you are a member of our group, I put a whole file folder of photos. There are photos that show all different kinds of wildflowers, all different kinds of scenes and colors. And if you go into that file, you'll figure out what two or three photos I used as inspiration from this because it wasn't one photo. I looked and said, oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. 
and I put them together. So anyway, and like I said, if you aren't a member of our group and you want to get a pattern of this, just send me an email at our time to quilt at twc.com and I will send you a free copy of my little pattern that I drew up. But feel free if you want, you can draw your own. So this is this is good practice because that's how you get comfortable and get better at landscape quilting. It's really pretty easy, but it will help you every one you do. I used to have a friend who was an artist and he passed away a few years ago, but he was the most amazing watercolor painter and he did um, pastels and he would do portrait work, everything. His name was Lee Lively. He used to do the art for behind the newscasters before they had all this modern camera, the modern camera tricks. And he told me that if you wanted to be a watercolor painter, it would take you 500 paintings to get good. Well, luckily, it only takes two or three landscape little quilts before you know what you're doing. So don't worry about that. So let me see any. Oh, yes, this will all be raw edge. And um, if you have a mono poly thread, which I happen to have some right here. This is YLI. But if you, oh, I don't think I have, Superior makes a great one. But I like using this or the smoky version to stitch down, to zigzag stitch down all the raw edge pieces because the glue doesn't hold forever. And so if you have some of this, if you don't, you don't have to worry. You'll just find the closing closest matching thread and you'll zigzag it down but the best way I think is using a Monty Poly because you can't even see where you stitched it down and every week I'm going to hold your hand and we're going to walk through this every week so let's say you say well I don't have time to do this if you have time to tune into the show we'll get your quilt done and every week we'll work together and then if you have more time during the week to even work on it more, try to find a needle, good embroidery needle or three. Try to find a good, find yourself your favorite thimble. If you have a little hoop that we can do the embroidery in, it makes it easier. Um, scissors, just simple. If you have a white eraser or a gum eraser, an art eraser, those are really good too. And then start gathering your th different color threads to do thread painting. You don't have to have special threads, just whatever you have handy. And usually, let me tell you what, I bet you if I were to come in your house, I would find a drawer that had a bunch of different colors of thread. That's perfect for this. And you'll just use a neutral gray or tan for the back for the bobbin thread. And you'll use the different color threads to do the thread painting on top. So what I suggest is you find some kind of container or a big Ziploc bag and start gathering the things to do this landscape quilting. That way, everything will be in one place. And when it comes Thursday night, you just grab your bag and here we are. We're ready to go. All righty. Now, let me see. Is there anything else I need to tell you. I have been, for any of you who came in later, I've been having some laptop computer problems. Like my last three live streams just quit because one of the connections came loose. Um, my screen on my laptop's going dimmer and dimmer. <laughs> And a couple times when I go to cut it on, I get the dreaded blue screen, the frozen screen of hell. And then it doesn't want to do anything. And luckily we've been able to revive it. But I've got an external hard drive and I'm trying to pull files off. I've got to order a new laptop and it's probably going to take up to a month to get it in. So that's not fun. But anyway, if you notice... I use them hard too. I have about five or six keys that 
you can't even tell what the key is. I've worn through them. That's how much I use this laptop. But um, don't forget, on our website, our group's I.O., um, I have a whole file full of photos. Nadine got me some and, and a lot of shortcuts to different kinds of flowers. And I'll be happy to show you uh, how to hand embroider. I have a really good resource, but I'll be glad to show you that. So I think you kind of know what to gather. If you have, I will make a list to put on our group's I.O., white glue, whatever, you know, school glue, whatever, or glue stick, um, any fusible, um, like steam -a seam or something. And, uh, but gather all your supplies you think you might use and put them in a basket or a box or a, a good size Ziploc bag, have it handy. And don't forget the 16 block method. It makes it so easy to enlarge anything, okay? So, I think, I think I've about covered beginning your fabrics out. I just want to show you again. Look for all your different fabrics, and I'm going to add to this, too. If you have a fabric that is patterned so that it looks like it would be flowers in a field or something or leaves on a tree. Grab it because up close here, we'll be doing specific flowers that you can kind of recognize, but on either side, it'll just be color. And um, I'm also going to teach you how to do confetti. So if you want to make some really fine confetti, I'll show you how to do that. And that'll make some flowers that are farther away. So, are there any questions? Hello, Miss Nikki. The e oh yes, the email is our time to quilt at twc.com, and you send me an email to that, and I will send you right out the pattern. Hello, Miss Jamie. I love your pictures of that quilt today, and your cat, and your house, and I love it. So, before I go, and we're just about done, but before I go, I want to show you something. I told you the other day I was ordering this, and I'm not sure where. I might use it on a quilt. I might use it mostly for polymer clay making, but I got some faux gold um, leaf. And I mean, this stuff is so thin and frail. Oh, look how fragile. All I did was kind of touch it and it tore off. So this will be used for something, trust me. So because, you know, that's the wonderful thing about quilt making, art quilt making especially. You can do anything you want. I can't get this leaf to leave my finger. <laughs> It's kind of stuck. <laughs> but anyway, but I got this faux gold leaf. It was like $5 and something, $5.99. And it already came in. And I can't wait to see where I'm going to use that. So make sure the day you use gold leaf, you don't have a fan on because it'll just fly away. Okay. So be gathering all, be gathering all of your supplies and get them handy get them in a place where you know right where they are because you know you're more inclined you're more likely to work on something if you don't have to go searching so get all get all your gathering done you're enjoying oh good time off work that is wonderful. Yeah, I'm thinking about using that gold on some polymer clay. I think that would be really cool. But I'm even thinking I can use it on a quilt. If I don't wash it, I think I can do it. So there's just, I love exploring and see what, seeing what works and what doesn't. But I'm going to kind of wind down now and... I'm going to leave you with me working 
on finishing my pattern transfer. And thank you for joining me. I'm so excited to be back to Art Quilt Thursdays. So I'm going to leave you with me working on transferring my design from the paper. You know, I folded the 16 squares. Then I folded my fabric in 16 squares. And here is how, just how easy it is to make that transfer using this method. And, oh, I've heard of that. I love your ideas, everybody. And Sunday, I, I can't wait to show you Jody. Jody has a wonderful new art quilt project. And I'm afraid to show you today because... <laughs> The last time I tried to show pictures, it cut off my computer. So I'm also downloading a new program called OSB, and my son recommended it, and I'm going to be learning so that I don't have to turn the camera. I'll be able to have these pictures just pop up. I'll be so professional, we hope. But anyway, but Sunday, I can't wait to show you. It, I'll leave you with this teaser. It's Jody's new boyfriend. And I can't wait to show you what she's working on. So, all right. I am going now to get back to, to working on this. And in a few minutes, I'll say goodbye. But, all right. Let's see. I'm going to pull it down here. I think I'll do this block right here which is the second block in. All right, I'll come over here, kind of do this, up, down. There we go. So now I have this part of this mountain, although I brought this down a little low, so I'll bring it back across that way. Now I have to come in here with this snow line. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. Oh my goodness, Vicki, you've always got a lot going on in your life. That's wonderful. And the, uh, on the pattern, I have it marked with a W to show that... I put a little W to remind myself that this is the white part of the mountain, the snow covered part. Okay. All right. I'm only, in fact, you know what, just to make sure I don't get confused, I'm going to fold this up. So from here up. I only draw what I see. Oops. I only draw what I see in this one block. Okay, just put little W's to remind me that that's the white part. All right, now I'm going to turn it down to see what goes in this next block. These are trees, so I'll do the trees here. And here I have a little line coming like this. And coming over here. Whoops, starting by here, go off that way. And then this going that way, okay? So I'm kind of, I hope you can see let me hold it up for you again 
So you can see that this method is fast and easy. There. Can you see it? Let me pull this over. Hopefully you can see what I've got. So that's how you can take any image of all. Let's say you find an image on the computer that you love. Take it and print it out. Then just fold it in 16 and you can turn it into your own. So I, yep, it is time for me to tell you goodbye. And I will be here. Now, as the weeks go on, I might stay a little longer. But today was just kind of a little intro to say, we're back and to get you started and to know what you need to gather if you want to try this. And you can't make a mistake in an art quilt. Remember, if only you know if it's a mistake. Otherwise, everybody thinks that was your artistic choice. So anyway, you know what to gather for next week. I will be here next Thursday, 730. And I hope you will join me as we create another beautiful world that we can live in. But uh, I hope you have a, yes, I will see you Sunday. Oh yeah, I'm doing really good. So everybody take really good care and also use that email if you would like to join our groups IO. Send me an email and if I've recognized your name twice, I'll be happy to send you an invitation. So I will see you next Thursday, but before that, I'll see you this Sunday for our regular quilting time. All right, take care everyone and thank you so much for showing up. We love our landscape and art quilts and you know what? Be thinking of good ideas for next time too. All right. Thank you so much. Take good care of yourself. You can't take care of anybody else unless you take care of yourself. Take good care. Bye-bye, everybody. And get that vaccination as soon as you're able. Take good care. Bye-bye. See you next Thursday for Art Quilt Thursday. Bye-bye, everybody. You're the best.